Good morning. I welcome you this morning to Plymouth Congregational Church under very strange circumstances. This has been such an odd service to plan and prepare for you this week because we've all been glued to the television. Um, looks thankfully, even as I'm filming this, that we will be spared somewhat, but I hope everyone has been prepared and that when we're all hearing this and worshiping on Sunday morning, that uh, all is well with you and with our city. Uh, just a few announcements. We do have an emergency response fund, and when we have a storm like this, it reminds us how important that is. We've been working with um, New Horizons Church in the Bahamas, and we are continuing to do that. Uh, so I invite you to pay a little more attention to that during this season. Uh, there may be even some opportunities for mission work, but we will be sure to keep you informed about that. Um, also, the need continues at the Coconut Grove Crisis Food Pantry. So when we have our food drive on our Communion Sunday on the 16th, I'm asking you to kind of prepare a little bit uh, over these next weeks to buy a little extra something when you go. Non-perishable foods, proteins, we will make sure the list is available in our email to you. Uh, but please do that for our neighbors. Um, I invite you after worship today to, there will be another link sent along with the email to get you into the service uh, to join us. We're going to have Zoom coffee hour. So, you know, make your coffee. If you want to be true Plymouth spirit, put some ice cream in it. Uh, but join us and we'll just, there's no anything. It's just a time of fellowship and it would just be nice to hear each other's voice, perhaps particularly after we've all been through Saturday. And so um, join us this morning for that time. People come into our lives and they bring so much uh, to it. We want to say goodbye this weekend to Liz and Ray Miller. They're moving to Jacksonville. Um, it's a lovely thing for them, but less so for us. Their two grown sons have uh, gone to the preschool and they've been held leadership positions and worked with the youth and the trustees for 20 years at Plymouth Church. And so we wish them well in their new life. We will miss them, but somehow I'm sure they will be back to visit us. So you are welcome here. We hope you too feel like you're part of this family. And even if we're driving to Jacksonville or we're wherever you are, you are welcome here. Let us worship. Let us call one another to worship. O oh God, we have gathered in worship to honor your name, to wonder at your word, and give thanks for your grace. Let us pray together. 
Lord, Lord of hope Lord. and possibility, you challenge us to see your world through eyes of faith. Your kingdom is always near us in surprising ways, hidden in every day in small seeds of faith growing to shelter us. As we gather to worship, open our eyes to your presence and our minds to your word. We ask these things in the name of your beloved Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 105. It's a psalm of gratitude for what God has done for the Israelites. And I especially ask you to notice and hear what it says about God's presence throughout. Psalm 105, verses 1 through 7. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God and his judgments are in all the earth. The word of God for the people of God. Hello, everybody. It is great. It is great to see you. Hey, I see Kristen coming on, so I'm guessing Cash is about to come on. It is great to see everybody. I haven't seen a lot of you for a while. I really missed you. So obviously, this is Pastor Al, and I've missed you guys a lot. And it's, it's been kind of a hard time being away from each other for, for so long. Actually, I just lost my full screen picture, so I'm going to have to uh, ad lib here. But um, so um, normally in a children's moment, I think you all remember, Zach, will you put up the picture of the chancel area? There we go. All right. See that picture? Now, on a normal Sunday, in a normal Sunday, what I do is I stand up. If I'm doing the children's moment, I walk to the top of those steps and I say to everybody, okay, could all the kids come forward and meet me in the chancel and the steps? And then we sit down together and I ask you all questions and we talk. And I can tell you, I have missed that so much. The children's moment is one of my favorite moments in worship. And so, it's a little different today. We're doing it on Zoom. And I'm in my office. I'm not in the sanctuary. I'm not where we would normally be. Eventually, we will be there. But for now, we're still doing it by Zoom. And so, I'm in my office. You can see my books behind me and my desk and some stuff on the wall. So, I've got one question for you guys. I'm in my office. My question for you all is, where are you? Oh, house. I'm in an office. You're in your, oh, you're upstairs. You're in the same building I'm in. I'm in my house. You're in your house. Okay, so you're in your house. We got someone. I couldn't see who that was, but in the house. Where are you? Oh, that was Max. Okay. Okay, so Giovanna, Giovanna where are you guys? That's the Jersey Shore. I know, you're up in I'm New in Jersey. You get her and there's, there's, um, okay, so hey, look I'm at little Alice. Couch. I'm Asha, in my where are you? on the couch. Someone, someone said they're on the couch. I am going to 
Oh, it's Ethan. Ethan said that. Yeah, I'm Ethan says that counts. Hey, LC. Hey, Ethan. Hey, you, Elsie. Hi, Ben. Elsie, you got your cat there. I'll bet you're at home. And Marion, where are you? I'm also on the couch. Also on the couch at home. And then, all right, so um, Isabel, where are you? I'll be, I think I know where Isabel is. I think you're in Michigan. And there's Cash. I saw Cash in Dallas. I know where you guys are, too. And it, it's, hey, look at, hey, look at Harry. North Carolina. You're in North Carolina. Well done, Cash. And Charlie, where are you? My love is alive. Well, looks like you're at home. And, a and Asher, I think you're at home. In Miami. You're in Miami. All right. So am I. So let me tell you something. You got, so what I love about Zoom is there's a little bit of chaos. And we've been doing children's moments for the last several months. And we don't get to ask you questions. So it's all very controlled. And this is uncontrolled. So I've got something to tell you. What you told me is that you're in a lot of different places. This is the first children's moment where we've been in different places. But you know something? There's something that Excuse all those me? places have in common. I want to read you something. Can you hear me? I want to yeah. read you one thing. Yes. It yes. It says... It's from the psalm, from today's psalm. It says, seek the Lord continuously. You know what that tells me about where you are, where I am, and where your parents are, and where your friends are? Yeah. Wherever you are, God is there. God is wherever we are. So here we are. Some of you are up north. Some of you are in Miami. Some of you or at your grandparents' house. Some of you are at your own house. It's, it, it, some of us are in our offices. <laughs> Amazing. Me? God is in every one of those places. That's what we always want to remember when we're having kind of a difficult time. We're, having, we're not together that much as we used to be. We will eventually, but right now we're not as together as we usually like to be. And so what we always want to remember when things are good and when things are hard, when we're having difficult times like we're having now with coronavirus, remember Excuse this, me? God is always with you. So I'm going to close us out with a prayer, just like we normally close out our children's moments. You ready? Okay. Let us pray. Yeah. I'm going to pray. You ready? Let us pray. God, we are amazingly grateful that wherever we are, you are there as well. And because of you, because of your presence in our lives all the time, we know that we will be okay no matter what is going on. We pray this in gratitude for all that you do for us. And we pray it in your son, Jesus' most holy name. Amen. 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 I cannot oh, wait. I can't wait to see you guys in person. Bye. Miss you. Bye. Can't wait to be with you. Later. I miss you too. We Let's miss wave goodbye. Bye. I'll see you. Wave goodbye. Bye, LC. Bye. 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 I could just sit. I could just sit and wait for all your goodness to feel your presence I could just stay I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you hope to feel something again I could hold on I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. I could be safe, I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home, never let these walls down. But you have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord, you will lead me.
could hold on I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside I could be safe I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home never let these walls down but you have called me higher you have called me deeper and I'll go where you will lead me Lord you have called me higher you have called me deeper and I'll go where you will lead me Lord you'll lead me I will be yours, I will be yours for all my life. I will be yours, I will be yours for all my life. I will be yours, I will be yours for all my life, so let your mercy I will be yours, Lord. I will be yours for all my life, so let your mercy light the path before me, cause you have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. second reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 13 and we are enjoying for these next several weeks some time with Jesus parables these two somehow to me don't really count seem like parables they're more like parabolitos so they're so small and lovely but they're no less rich two parabolitos Matthew chapter 13 verses 31 through 35 Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Then he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowd all these in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the word. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you do reveal your word to us in so many surprising ways. Therefore, open our hearts and our minds, illumine our souls that we might hear your word this day. Amen. There's been a question on my mind, actually for about several weeks. Is there some kind of sourdough bread society out there somewhere with its own underground, passing along top secret, high grade yeast starter? I found a baker who was willing to speak with me off the record and under conditions of anonymity to reveal some of their yeastly secrets. The alchemy of grain, and water, the work of human hands, place, and time for this bubbling transformation to happen, creating something beautiful and life-giving. Now, I'm not a bread baker. It's just too much waiting around for me. And it's not that I'm particularly impatient. I don't mind waiting expectantly for seeds to sprout or plants to grow. 
I spend a lot of time out on our campus watching expectantly as things grow and change. The remnants of the pink cassias out by Devon Road fading as the orange poinsettias have their day in the sun. The majestic, mature trees are always ready and waiting for us, offering sanctuary from the sun, the rain. They've welcomed so many people, and I'm pleased to say their dogs, on their walks. They've been a central attraction to children on their play dates. And in the late afternoons and on quiet days, the fluttering of their leaves has been a kind of background music for some life-changing conversations that happen here. I think somehow that God may have been waiting for me to notice that many of the young trees that we've planted in memory and hope over the last decade have taken root and have really started to grow. In the years to come, it makes me happy. They will inspire delight and give shelter for the tears of joy and grief for people we will never know. Those trees are a parabalito for God's wonderful works, reminding me of God's beauty, patience, God's welcome, and strength. I do have to say, however, though, that these last few days, when we've been preparing for what was to come this weekend, looking at these trees that are so beautiful, to me they were in some ways a parable of our own vulnerability. I worry about them. In our parabalitos today, the kingdom of heaven is unexpected. A man takes a tiny mustard seed. It all but disappears when it leaves his hands and is absorbed into the soil. The kingdom of heaven is dynamic and surprising. Not the expected shrub, but the surprising abundance of a tree. The kingdom of heaven is the blessing of growth. Not so that the man can have mustard on his pastrami sandwich, but so that the birds of the air would have a place to land to flock together, to make a nest, to breathe, to create a future. The kingdom of heaven is living and expansive. It's pervasive. It's yeast permeating the entire batch of dough and then bubbling up. The kingdom of heaven is the grace and blessing of God's steadfast love. Steadfast love at work in the darkness under the ground where we can't see it, transforming, sending out roots and shoots, bubbling up in our lives. Our parabalitos remind us that more often than not, we do not see God at work. So we feel like we're waiting and waiting and waiting, waiting for Godot while time is passing and it seems like nothing is happening to nurture the kingdom of heaven in the field or in the kitchen, at home or in the world. Time. Time is a friend to some and a fearful adversary for others. And these days, it feels like we spend a lot of time waiting for weather advisories and virus advisories. And truthfully, <laughs> At least from my perspective, life does feel a bit like the theater of the absurd. When people first saw Waiting for Godot, they were waiting for the plot to thicken. Nothing was happening in the play. And most people left after the first act. Friends, we cannot do that. We're still in the first act, and we have a long way to go till we even get to the intermission. And this is not a play in which nothing happens. Seen and unseen, seeds and yeast under the ground in places of darkness, mixed in, bubbling throughout the dough of our lives. God is at work. What are we growing? Are we creating 
with our lives, parabalitos of the kingdom of heaven? Some of the starter that people are sharing out there is well and truly sour. Fear is bubbling, frustration is bubbling, snarkiness is bubbling, toxic fumes are bubbling and we are kneading it and kneading it and kneading it into the dough and the flour of our society. Around our dinner tables that transform into our work desks and back again, sometimes several times a day, in businesses, great and small, in hospitals, in retirement homes, and in local and state administrations, people are struggling with hard choices about vital, and I mean that word, it has to do with life and death, questions. Amidst historic uncertainties and unknown unknowns, and that's a difficult thing for 21st century knowers to come to terms with the truth that there are times when actually what we do know amounts to a tiny, invisible mustard seed. There's so much yet to be revealed and so much yet to be discovered and to discern. That's why Jesus' parables are such a sacred blessing they shape who we are. They shape how we live as God's people. Jesus walked with us as one of us and invited us to follow and serve. But we have to decide if we're going to accept that calling, and if so, how we're going to live into it. And he taught in parables and parabolitos, seeds and yeast, to stretch our minds and our hearts, to make us think, to challenge our assumptions, to give us shelter for our questions. Parables that they do nothing else. They invite our questions. And to give us branches upon which we can sit together amidst all our differences. My friends, we can do this. Today's parabolitos include men and women. The man is at work, out in the field. The woman is at home. The tiny seed is in the darkness, and the woman has a multitude of grain seeds ground up, kneading them together, transforming them. Jesus wants us to know that the kingdom of heaven is right here, and it's not just for the birds that there is love deep enough and broad enough to give us shelter in our work, in our homes, in its care. We can do this with every, even the smallest act of love, the kingdom of heaven grows. And with every, even the simplest word spoken in love, God's presence is known and shared with the person who hears it. I might also say, with the person who speaks it. Friends, home is different. School is different. College is different. Work is different. Play is different. It's all new and strange soil for our life together. And our parabalitos remind us that patience is different from inertia. And trust is different from complacency. And hope is different from fantasy. We can do this. So what seeds of faith and hope can we plant together? And then when we do that, how can we nurture them in new and loving ways. Vulnerable people across our city are in need. And let's be honest, people who may not be in need right now are feeling increasingly vulnerable that they might soon be in need. Over the last few days, we've all been reminded to prepare for the aftermath of our summer storms, to have several days of non-perishable food. And so for some of us, 
That means the dread of a trip to the store. Days of food? What about the people who are struggling to put the next meal on the table? Troubles that seem as tiny as a mustard seed to some feel like the weight of the world to the person who's holding it in her hand. Our worries and our cares and the frictions of day-to-day -day living can grind us up like grain milled into fine flour and we feel like dust. My friends, even when we feel like dust, we can do this. The kingdom of heaven is like a simple meal offered to a neighbor. It feeds the body of one. It feeds the souls of both. We can do this. Add the leaven, the sacred starter, not that sour, toxic stuff. The sacred starter of steadfast love. And knead that dough with the pervasive power that God's goodness puts into our hands. Have persistence and patience, the queen of virtues. And as it bubbles up, we can offer the bread of hope to the hungry. In the midst of the uncertainties of COVID and cones, my friends, we can leaven our living with God's kingdom challenges and God's kingdom promises. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. We can do this. Held in God's hands, we can see the world through eyes of faith. And actually, leaven our living with passion for the possible. We can turn and face the challenges of our days with all our hearts, all our souls, all our minds, making the best of all the blessings that God has poured into our lives. What shall we plant? Wendell Berry described trees planted for the future, and it's beautiful. Slowly, slowly, they return to the small woodland, let alone Great trees outspreading and upright, apostles of the living light. Patient as stars, they build in air, tier after tier, a timbered choir. Stout beams upholding weightless grace of song, a blessing to this place. Perhaps the kingdom of heaven is like our beloved climbing tree a blessing from the past to this place. An unexpected surprise, inviting us to look up and challenging us to have the courage to climb. If I can do it, you can do it. The kingdom of heaven is like a tree that no wind can break, with roots that no waters can erode. We can prepare the way for it to grow, with compassion, with empathy, courage, and persistence, with seeds of hope in our hearts, and loving strength in our hands. Let's not wait. Amen.
Plymouth Church, let us pray. Miraculous Lord, creator of heaven and earth, creator of a world full of miracles, a world in which the smallest of seeds, acorns, can grow into the largest of trees, even into redwoods. God, we're grateful for the miracle of nature, the miracle of life, the miracle of growth. And we come today asking for growth. Help us to grow our faith, bringing us closer to you, finding spiritual strength, always knowing that you are close at hand. Help us to grow as people, as brothers, as sisters, as parents, as we might become more caring and more empathetic in those relationships. Give us greater capacity for love. Give us greater capacity for patience and listening and kindness and generosity towards others. And especially in this time with so much tension, help us to be more accepting of our differences and see that all of us, every single one of us, is a unique seed with great potential to grow. Help us also to grow as a church that we might make more of a difference in each of our lives within the church, but also make more of a difference in the community around us. That we might be like yeast, like leaven in the dough, impacting the world around us and spreading your blessings, helping and doing our part so that we can support you and your love for us and everyone. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And God, there are many things, joys and worries on our hearts. And so we bring those to you now. We begin with the joy of John Sauvignier and Sally Marchant getting married. John and Jan's son, also, we pray for Ray and Liz Miller as they head north up to Jacksonville, longtime members who've served this congregation so faithfully. We pray also for this, the people suffering with COVID-19. Specifically, this day, we're thinking of Jerry Brennis' parents and also George and Virginia Rodriguez and Maria Chacon. And also now in our hearts, we pray for Jeff Crockett, his, his family, his, Jeff's father, Jerry, is going into hospice. We also pray this day for the Coconut Grove Crisis Food Pantry, our partners in ministry, that they're, what they do and what we do to help them will spread food and deliver food to many in need. And now, a moment of silence, silent prayer, knowing that you hear all that's in our hearts. God, we ask you to hear our prayers, both spoken and unspoken. We need you, God, and we love you, and we pray this in your Son's most holy name. Amen.
I'm speaking to you from a place some of you may not even know exists. It's actually our archive room. And this is the reproduction actually of a postcard from the sanctuary uh, from 1921. Um, as many of you may or may not know, the sanctuary over uh, where we worship was built in 1917. And um, so for all of those years, over 100 years, uh, people have gone through storms in life and in our city. And what we've managed to be, do is be faithful through all of that. And we appreciate all of the support that you give to Plymouth and its ministries. Uh, these are uh, difficult times emotionally and financially for I know many of you. Um, it's a bit challenging for the church as well. We want very much to continue our ministries with all of the places that we reach out to in the community. Um, so we are asking for you to uh, be consistent with your pledges if you can and to be generous uh, to some of the other ministries that happen within the congregation. Uh, we stand under the uh, shadow of tall oaks as we call them here, and we are the young ones, and it is our turn to grow those foundations for the future. Um, thank you for your generosity. Friends, I hope this worship service has encouraged you, and I hope that we are all mindful of the people who are looking to the skies and out their windows and doing so with fear and concern and anxiety. Let us pray for God's blessing and strength and courage, but also that no one should feel alone. Friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, give you courage. Encourage us as we wait and give us peace. Amen.